So basically, as an overview for this, uh, for this iconic, for this uh, iconic analogous model, this is a lung, basically, the right lung in this case, and the left lung, in this case. And so this is the fissure between the uh, lung lobes. As you could see, the fissure. This is a fissure. So this could be the transverse fissure, for example, between the mid lobe and the inferior lobe. There could be an oblique. Let's see. This should be the transverse fissure. And this should be the upper lobe, and this is the uh, lower lobe. The lower and the mid lobe together. We can't identify other fissures. This, this might be the oblique fissure, but it's not actually aligned. So this might be the oblique fissure, and this is the transverse fissure. There. And so this is the middle lobe, and this is the inferior lobe, and this will be the superior lobe. And if you go to the, this, those are the bronchovascular uh, bundles. This is the bronchovascular bundle, and this is the uh, right bronchovascular bundle. This is the left, and we cannot identify much of the left lung. Now, uh, if you talk this, this actually, you could use it to describe parts of the lung. For example, this is a pleura, by the way. This part is the pleura. So you could use this to describe a miniaturized uh, form of the system. You could use it to build a miniaturized form of the system and describe a specific, uh, specific components of the system. So basically the gross components, the very large uh, picture. And not the actual internal design because that might uh, differ from the actual hum humanitarian uh, anatomical uh, outline. So basically if we start, if we take the heart, for example, uh, it's still freezing. Let's take the heart. Those would be the great vessels. We cannot actually. Those would be the great vessels. Typically, the pulmonary, the pulmonaries. So the pulmonary arteries. Basically, they should be the pulmonary arteries because they originate the the pulmonary trunk, the branches of the pulmonary trunk, because they originate from the right ventricle. So this would be the anterior wall. And this will be the posterior wall of the heart. And I have, uh, I have dissected it so we could see the interior uh, of the heart. So this is basically the interior of the, this will be the interior of the right ventricle. And you might see, uh, look at the ultrastructure on the ultrastructure level, uh, see the thickness of the of the right ventricle as compared to the left one. See the thickness here. It actually exceeds uh, two centimeters and one to two centimeters thickness. While this actually uh, does not does not exceed the 0.5 centimeters. So basically, uh, this is not actually uh, true in humans because, as I told you, it's uh, just an analogous model. So we'll use it as an analogous model. This is the septum. This is the septum, the muscular part of the system of the septum. And the fibrous part should be up there around the truncus arteriosus here. This is, this will be, let's see. This would be the fibrous part. This is the fibrous part of the septum. And this is the muscular part of the septum. And now you could see the trapecula, basically, of the pectinate muscles. This would be the trapecula. This is the septum marginal trapecula. And this would be the annulus for the tricuspid valve, this is the tricuspid valve, and it is actually opening into the right atrium. This is the right atrium, and it has the appendage on it. So this is the right atrial appendage. It's very thin as compared to humans. But uh, this, those, those are basically the corda, the corda tendini. Those parts are the corda tendini, but they are not well developed here called that tendon eye of the tricuspid valve. As you can see, the valve is here. And the septal marginal uh, trapecula of the right ventricle. This would be the septum, the muscular part of the septum. And again, to recap, let's, let's try to visualize the great vessels here. So this opening basically is the opening for the pulmonary artery. This opening here is an opening for the pulmonary artery, and this is an opening for the aorta. And the superior vena cava goes here. There should be the vena cava valves here. Or somewhere here, but they are actually missing in this model.
So this is actually the truncus arteriosus. This is a truncus, this is a conus arteriosus, this is truncus arteriosus as a whole. And if we try to, let's try to see the bricardium. Okay, this is a bricardium, as you could see. It's a very thin uh, connective tissue layer that is adherent. It's very adherent to the, to the muscle of the heart. And now let's examine the left ventricle. So the left ventricle is located at the, uh, at the posterior uh, surface of the heart, as you could see. It is far thicker than the than the right ventricle, and I hope you see this is the corda. It is apparent here the corda of the valve, the bicuspid valve or the mitral valve. This is a corda of this valve. This is the septal margin of trabecula, and the, the trabeculations for the vectinate muscle of the left ventricle. This is a corda, and it appears here very well. This is a corda. So this basically would be the uh, bicuspid valve. It has two cusps, a septal cusp or an anterior cusp and a posterior non-septal cusp or leaflet. So this is basically the bicuspid valve and it opens into the left atrium, as you could see, the left atrium there. And this is the valve. So uh, when, there's, when those muscles actually contract, they pull on the, they pull on the corda and uh, when pulling into the corda, it actually closes the, the atrioventricular part so that uh, we inhibit the, regurg the regurgitation of blood into the, the left atrium. This would be the left atrium, and this is the left atrial appendage. Let's try to visualize the aortic opening. This would be the aortic opening. So basically we have the opening for, let's try to get the opening to this, the probe for the opening of the pulmonary trunk and the, the aorta opens through here. But also pulmonary veins, it seems that they converge. The pulmonary veins, those are the opening for pulmonary veins, and this is the opening for the aorta. This is the opening for the aorta. And now you got a basic idea, again, this is a precardium. You got a basic idea of uh, this, this model. It's very cool to see uh, an analogous model of the duck, and it's very actual, actual analogous to humans. So, a very cool model. Very cool model. Okay, let's 